Hello guys, thank you for joining me again. This is my third video in my little mini series of the perks for Killing Floor 2. Today I'm going to be talking about the flame bug. It's a nice sunny day outside, so it's a perfect day for staying inside and avoiding the sun at all costs. So yeah, today uh, talking about the flame bug. Because there was the Incinerate and Detonate DLC that came out a little while ago, I figure that uh, they'll be the best classes to talk about now. So uh, let's get going. All right, lovely and jubbly. So my first tip for the flame bug is going to be burst fire with all of his weapons. Um, I mean, you can't burst fire with a shotgun, but especially with the flamethrower and the cork and burn, you want to be burst firing because those weapons will rinse through your ammo in no time at all if you hold down the click. So what you want to be doing is burst firing. Every time you click just once, you're going to use four ammo. So you can pretty much see it as you only get about 10 shots with the cork and burn and you get 20 shots with the flamethrower. Now, um, the speciality of the flame bug is basically damage over time and his ability to just tag swathes of enemies very quickly with fire and to just let them burn out. So you want to be using burst fire and just, just basically utilizing that afterburn that you get from, from the weapons to, to do the most of your damage. Pretty much what you want to be doing is setting fire to everything and then just running away and trying to get away. Sometimes you'll find that the gore farts are going to chase you down and that's going to be one of your main issues early on in the game. Uh, I would say, I mean I've referred to this in my other videos, utilize your melee attack. It's V by default on the keyboard. If you set fire to stuff and something's still coming through the fire and it's going to hit you, just hit V and you'll smack them out of the way and that'll stop them from hitting you first. So yeah, burst fire with the flamethrower and the cork and burn especially, you can't do that with a shotgun. But even with the microwave gun you want to be using um, a burst fire. And I'll speak about that in a moment when I when I refer to the uh, mechanics of the different guns in, in one of my next points. Break time's over. Get back to work. More Zeds inbound. This next point is a little bit of a mixed bag with the flame bug because I'm going to talk about aiming and you can pretty much aim <laughs> anywhere on the enemy and obviously you're going to be doing damage. The mechanics are a little bit technical with the flame bug, but I'd say as a rule of thumb basic thing to do is just aim for their, their feet, aim for their ankles, same as you would with the demolitionist, because if you miss their feet, or if you miss their body or anything, instead of the flames just dissipating, it's going to make a pool of flame on the floor, which is going to do damage to anyone that walks through it anyway, and the damage on the floor does actually stack with the damage, the after damage, um, the after burn damage that the Zeds get when they get set on fire, so it, it's, it's a good practice to just aim for their feet. You can get headshots, oddly enough, and pop heads with the flamethrowers. Um, but it's generally not, it's not, it's not really that useful. Unless you, you want to kill something immediately that's coming at you. Especially the gore fasts, because they, you know, they tend to run through the fire and go for you. Speaking of which, if, if gore fasts are coming through the fire to attack you, um, and they're already on fire, don't keep shooting them with the fire, because you're just going to, you're going to spend all your ammo. Just hit V and use your melee attack to just push them back. It stops them from attacking you, and it means, you know, they're, they're just going to, they're, they're going to burn out from the afterburn damage anyway. Glad you made it back. Don't bleed on anything. So the perk weapons for the flame bug, you're going to start off with the cork and burn, the cheap flamethrower. Now it does pretty pathetic impact damage, but it does good afterburn damage. Um, the afterburn damage on the cork and burn is actually the same as the flamethrower. The advantage of the flamethrower is the flamethrower does good impact damage as well, uh, making it useful for taking out big Zeds and really really quick at taking out the trash mobs very very quickly um but like i say the afterburn with the cork and burn is the same so it makes the cork and burn still an incredibly useful weapon considering it's very cheap and it's very light as well uh, the next gun you're going to be able to afford is the trench gun which fires dragon's breath ammunition so it's basically a, kind of like a long range flamethrower uh, it has that punch of the shotgun, so there is the impact damage it has, but yeah, the, the main use of it is the fact that it's it's a long-range flamethrower almost. So you'll be able to get hold of that. I always buy the, the trench gun, and I tend to skip the flamethrower because the flamethrower fulfills the same role as the cork and burn, but it's just it takes up more space and it's more expensive. So I personally tend to skip the flamethrower because then I can just save up for the microwave gun, grab the microwave gun, and the microwave gun is incredibly effective at taking out big Zeds, and it's pretty useful against the boss too. 
once you've got the microwave gun, you've got a choice of either having the cork and burn or the trench gun as your backup weapon. So you, you can either go for range or you can go for, for killing power, um, like trash mob killing power. Now, what I tend to do is I keep the cork and burn until the boss. So I'll have the cork and burn and the microwave gun. So I've got the cork and burn to take out groups of trash mobs. The microwave gun for taking out the big zeds. And then when it's Hans Volta, Hans, yeah. I just grab the trench gun just because I think it does a bit more. It's a bit more useful to have that range attack against Hans Volta because he's, he's so aggressive when you get close to him. Alright, so dealing with the big boys. So dealing with the, the big Zeds in the game, with the flame bug, he's pretty effective as well. He's, he's great against all the small trash mobs because he can set fire to everything so quickly. And even with the big mobs, he's he's great. Um, basically, what you want to be doing with the, the flame bug is just hitting the big Zeds with a Molotov. When they get caught on fire like that, they, they stumble around. They, they almost get in incapacitated for a little moment whilst they kind of... Uh, lose their shit over the fact they're on fire then they're gonna charge at you uh, and then you just want to keep sort of buzzing at them with the, the microwave gun if you've got if you've only got the flamethrower at this point do the same thing with the flamethrower but ideally you'll have the microwave gun by the time you start facing the scrakes and the flesh pounds so just keep buzzing them with the microwave gun the microwave gun sometimes stumbles them as well so you can stumble them with the molotov then you can stumble them with the microwave gun and from what I've heard there is a cooldown on that stumble, but there's a separate cooldown for the flamethrower and the microwave gun. So you can kind of switch between the cork and burn and the microwave gun. Now, I don't do any of this. Just keep it simple, throw a molotov, set them on fire, stumble them, and then just keep buzzing them with the, the microwave gun. Remember the burst fire, don't just hold it down. You can just keep burst firing with the microwave gun and there's kind of residual hits after each little burst. So you'll get way more damage if you do that. Also, bear in mind that you get a bit of splash damage off of the microwave gun. So if you happen to get attacked by two scrakes or two flesh pounds or anything, if they're close together, you're going to be doing damage to both. So that's that's a really good thing to bear in mind. That if they if it looks like they're going to cross paths, then wait until they're close to each other and start hitting them then, because you're gonna you're gonna damage both and it's, it's going to be far more effective. 